Begin by hooping up cutaway stabilizer in the hoop and load the design onto your machine. Then place batting one on top of the hoop. Stitch the batting down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the batting about one to two millimeters from the stitching. Use the following diagram as a reference for each step of the applique process. Stitch the placement line for the background fabric. Place fabric A background right side up on top of the hoop covering the placement line and stitch down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Leave the excess fabric in the seams. Embroider the decorative stitching on the left side of the hoop. Repeat the applique process for shape 1 using a piece of fabric large enough to cover the placement line. Trim. Leave the excess fabric in the seams. Stitch the placement line for shape 2. Place fabric B, shape 2, on top of the hoop wrong side up with a quarter of an inch crossing over the placement line and the excess fabric pointing towards the top left corner of the hoop. Stitch down. Fold the fabric over so the right side is facing up and stitch down. Leave the fabric in the seams. Repeat the applique process for shape 3 using fabric C. And trim. Stitch the placement line for shape 4. Place fabric D, shape 4, on top of the hoop wrong side up with a quarter inch crossing over the placement line and the excess fabric pointing towards the right hand side of the hoop. Fold the fabric over so the right side is facing up and stitch down. Trim. Repeat the flip and fold process for shape 5 using fabric E. Trim. Repeat the flip and fold process for semicircle 1 using fabric F. And trim. Embroider the quilting, then continue to embroider the satin stitch onto semicircle 1. Repeat the flip and fold process for semicircle 2 using fabric G. Trim. Embroider the quilting, then continue to embroider the satin stitch onto semicircle 2. Stitch the placement line for batting 2. Place two layers of batting 
batting two on top of the placement line and stitch down. Trim one layer at a time. Repeat the applique process for shape six using a piece of fabric large enough to cover batting two and trim. Embroider the satin stitch around shape six circle. Repeat the applique process for shape seven using fabric H. Trim, leave the excess fabric in the seams. Repeat the applique process for shape eight using fabric I. Trim and leave the excess fabric in the seams. Repeat the applique process for shape nine using fabric J. Trim. Embroider the quilting onto shape nine. Embroider the satin stitch around shape nine. Embroider the satin stitch around shape eight. Embroider the satin stitch around shape seven. Repeat the applique process for shape 10 using fabric K. Trim and leave the excess fabric in the seams. Embroider the satin stitch around shape 10. Repeat the applique process for shape 11 using fabric L. Trim. Leave the excess fabric in the seams. Embroider the satin stitch around shape 10. Embroider the satin stitch around shape one. The stitch out is now complete. Remove from the hoop and trim the seams about half an inch. Hold the side until all your blocks are made. Joining the blocks, lay your blocks on a flat surface. Place the first two blocks right sides together. Pin along the bottom edge lining up the two border seams and the points of the satin stitch the best you can. Take your time with this process. Stitch the side seam on your sewing machine. Stitch just inside the border already stitched on the blocks so the stitching will not be seen on the right sides later. Open out the stitch seams and iron flat. Continue this until you have each horizontal row of blocks joined. Next, join the horizontal rows to each other by placing the first two rows right sides together. Pin and stitch the seams on your sewing machine. Stitch just inside the border already stitched on the blocks so the stitching will not be seen on the right side later.
Open out the stitch seams and iron them flat. Prepare and add borders. For the borders, decide how wide you would like them. We made ours 3 inches, 8 centimeters wide. Cut two strips of border fabric, Fabric G, the length you just measured. Then cut two pieces of batting, batting two, to match. Next we are going to secure the batting to the border fabric. Lightly spray temporary adhesive to the batting and then lay your fabric right side up on the batting. Place the cushion on top of the border fabric with the attached batting, right sides together. Pin or clip together. Stitch together with a half inch seam, pinning and stitching on the wrong side of the cushion means you can make sure you are stitching inside the border line on the front of the cushion. This will ensure the line of stitching will not show on the front. Trim back the batting from the seam allowance. Repeat for the opposite border. Fold over and iron the side border down neatly. Top stitch the border for a neat flat finish. If needed, trim the borders to make them even. Now measure one of the side edges without a border, including the new border width in your measurement. Cut two strips of border fabric, Fabric H, the length you just measured. Then cut two pieces of batting, batting three to match. Repeat the basting stitch method or use the temporary adhesive spray that we did for the first two borders. Place the cushion on top of the border fabric with the attached batting right sides together. Pin and stitch a half inch seam from the edge. Trim back the batting from the seam allowance. Fold over and iron the border down neatly. Top stitch the border for a neat flat finish. Repeat for the opposite side of the cushion front and trim the borders to make them all even.
Preparing the backing. Take out both pieces of fabric eye. Starting with the first fabric eye piece. Fold one of the long edges over half an inch wrong sides together and press. Then fold over a second time another half inch and press. Stitch along the folded edge to hold it in place. Repeat the same steps for the second fabric eye piece. Adding the backing to the cushion. On one of the fabric eye pieces, measure out and mark the placement line for the second fabric eye piece. Measure 2.5 inches in from the folded edge of the first fabric eye piece. We draw a line across indicating this 2.5 inch mark with a chalk pen. Have your cushion front right sides facing up. Take the fabric eye piece that has the 2.5 inch marking on it and lay it wrong side up on top of the cushion front. You want them to be right sides together. Hold the fold of the marked fabric eye piece meeting up with the seam in between the top and bottom rows of blocks. Place your remaining fabric eye piece on top of the bottom half of the cushion front, wrong side up, with the folded edge in line with the mark on your first fabric eye piece. The two backing pieces should form an envelope, with the hem sides overlapping each other. The backing pieces will be larger, but this excess fabric will be trimmed away later. Pin the two backing pieces in place. Then turn the whole cushion over to the other side, so that the wrong side of the blocks are facing upwards. The backing pieces should not fall off as you have pinned it. And stitch the back and the cushion front together with a half inch seam all the way around the cushion, being careful not to get the machine foot caught on the folds of the backing. Trim the backing fabric so it matches and is in line with the cushion front. Clip the corners. Turn your cushion out through the envelope created from the two backing pieces of fabric. Use a chopstick to help push out the corners. Iron. Insert a cushion insert or stuff with stuffing.
Enjoy your cushion.